in the name of Jesus. He said it wasn't long after that that whatever her miserable friend name was never came around again. We just have to be careful. The devil likes to sneak in in every way. And they'll come in friendly, but in the end, it will turn hostile. Because they want to do three, one of three things to us, and in the end, they want to do this. Because a thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. When we look at ghosts, it's possible that these ghosts have led people into not only dying, but um, convincing people to commit suicide. Some people may say, I do not believe in ghosts. But when it comes down to it, the truth of reality is, how many ghost tales do you know? How many accounts do you know? How many accounts have we heard of? And it's not just in a local area, but if there's a lot of things going on, there has to be an explanation. Everyone can't be seeing the same thing in all these houses. There has to be something seriously going on. Ghost account sightings account num their account numbers are too great for them all to be true. <coughs> Somebody has to be witnessing something, and these people, at least one of these people, have to be sincere. They actually have to believe what they saw. Because what happens if you've seen a ghost? Some people might classify you as a little crazy. But there are way too many sightings to take them all as hoaxes. So when we're taking everything into consideration, there's but one truth that we are left with. If demons cannot be the soul of people caught here in this realm, they have to be demons. There's nothing else for them to be. Does anybody have any thoughts, any questions at this point? Well, some people believe, and this comes from some pastors, that archangels come at the dead ones leave and appear to you as the dead loved one. I mean, my, my friend, I seen her husband, and this was when she was sleeping. She woke up and seen him standing by the bed, and her pastor told her that archangels will come and appear to you as your dead loved one. And I'm thinking, well, I think maybe that was your imagination wanting to see your dead husband, especially when you're waking up, you know, right after they die. You know, my husband seen his dad leave the yard after he died, and he stands behind it that it was his dad. Now, do demons come and do that? Like, try to comfort you right after? And I guess they would if they want to try and get to you, so. They would, they can use that count. There are several things I have to say on that one. First of all, when it comes to your um, that lady you've seen her dead husband, if he's already dead and moved on, no, it was either A, her imagination moving on, or B, it was a demon using that image to it come on. It never be an angel, right? I mean, an angel of God. No, no. no. Never, I didn't think so. What would be the purpose? God himself should be sufficient. To they comfort. say comfort, just for comfort. I mean, that's what they don't believe, it's just comfort. But with that same, with, you know, like I said, I have several things to say on that yet. How about this account? I know of a woman who, her dad left. He died. Let me put it that way. He didn't leave. He died. And she saw a white squirrel in the yard. And to her, that was her reassurance from her dad saying, I'm all right. You know, I realize people can take things to mean what they are. It was just a white squirrel. It just happened to be there at the time. In that account, I'd say it was a demon. Now, with um, your husband, if it was at the exact moment that his dad died? No, it was after. After. I could, I could believe if someone died immediately, and you're right there in the presence that all of a sudden you died, looks maybe of them being taken away. Okay. I can see that. Coming back for comfort? No. The other thing... Is it also possible that I would have done my and die? Somewhere, 
you could take it that way, brother, but personally, I think it was just a wake up. I mean, God can do things to let us know, but it, it wasn't that first. But no, no, I know that. But what I mean, he could have sent that dove to give you the right peace. All things are possible. Because uh, they are represented, you know. Yeah, I know the dove peace. Well, because, you know. The other thing I have to say with people coming back from the dead, it doesn't happen unless God allows it. And there's only one time that I know of that somebody came back from the dead and people would disagree with me on it. I know that. And that is when Saul went to the witch of Endor. This is a witch. She was very familiar with familiar spirits. And Saul went seeking her under disguise to um, consult somebody. And as soon as she's seen Samuel, she was taken back and said, what is this thing that you have me do? Why do you have me consult this person? That was a woman who's very familiar with demons, and this spirit caught her off guard and startled her or scared her. That's the only time in Scripture I think God personally allowed um, a spirit to have contact from the dead with the, um, if you want to say, our realm, the human realm, um, the world we live in. Not like, like I said, there is no distinction, but really, you want to say, come from heaven or hell at the final destination and come back to earth or have communication back and forth. First and second kings or first and second Samuel? Okay. I, I really don't remember. I have to get okay. you. I'm thinking kings. Was it Samuel? I'd have to look that up for you, Sister Ricky. I really okay. was. But that's the only account, and the only reason I believe that is the witch was taken, the witch, the demon consultant, whatever you want to call her, the. Uh, Soothsayer, the fortune teller, whatever you want to refer to her as, she was caught off guard. If this was really another demon, why was she caught off guard? That's why I believe that's the only account we have okay. of something like that. She was surprised and she was startled. <coughs> and like I said, other than that, that doesn't happen. God must allow it. But even then, I'd say no. No. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Or when Jesus was. Pray and, um, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that account. Uh, Moses and Elijah. Yes. But that was different. That was Jesus. That's a whole other. I wouldn't even. I would say it would be different though. Oh, okay, same thing. Well, he allowed it. God allowed. God still allowed it. Yes, they came for comfort for Jesus, I believe. Pray it could have been, but at the same time, it's a rare occurrence. Yes. And thing is, if something like that would happen, I'd say throw the red flag. Question it. Yeah. Rebuke it. If it's of God, it don't stay. If it's not, it don't go. I mean, don't play around with it. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? I think about just in some times when you know people have lost loved ones, they're looking for comfort. Oh, yeah. Especially if they're not saved. The Bible gives us a different problem on comfort than we live in. Because we don't summarize others who doesn't have hope. We know that our hope is in God. And I've had people sometimes say things and I know that they're totally off the mark. And at that moment, I don't rob their comfort from them, but I do take opportunity later to educate them um, because I want them to find God in that. But I know already at the hospital, you know, there's been people who um, have come out of surgery. And the doctors will say, you know, they have to loosen a little bit after anesthesia and surgery. And so uh, we just don't buy into them saying that they see things. But there are times where I would never take from someone. And they say, I feel like, you know, God came and visited me. And well, God does come visit me. And I'm not going to take that away from people. But we do have to bank with the Word of God. What is biblical? What's not biblical? You know, if you're seeing grandma and grandpa, then you better definitely be doing some soul searching and praying because God won't be grandma and grandpa to have comfort. He's right. God's enough. Yeah. And um, we can't get our eyes on other people. We need to go to God. We need to go to God. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. That verse, it's pretty chapter 28. First Samuel 28. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Okay, thank you. Did you have a comment, sister? 
<coughs> Anyone else at this time? If not, we'll go ahead. You know, uh, when you say uh, uh, that we bring out Samuel, not there, but so much different than uh, uh, Moses and Elijah, was there with uh, Jesus, because of which brought him up, where was uh, Moses and Elijah, they appeared there with Christ. But, but God still had to allow it. Right. But, but what I mean, then two are so much different. Though. But I still wouldn't disagree from the aspect that um, God still had to allow it. They, oh, couldn't, yeah. they couldn't come over on their own. Yeah. And while the situation might have been different, the um, factors and the aspects behind it still don't change. God still had to allow that to come down. But it comes, still comes down to God oh, yeah. still had to allow it. Oh, yeah. But why don't we just end there for today and then we'll prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. And I pray, Lord, that you just put a hedge of protection around about this church today. And let your angels be in charge, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you anoint know, the song leader and the musicians, Lord. Have, give them the songs that you have them lead us into. Worship, Lord, that give you praise and glory, for you alone are holy and worthy. We pray in the name of Jesus that you just uh, anoint the pastor as he brings forth your word, Lord. We pray that the gifts of tongues, interpretation, word of wisdom and knowledge, that all the gifts of the Spirit would be in operation today, Lord, and that we receive from you what, we have, what you have for us. We pray that we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the word which you have for us, that we take root on good soil, Lord, that it may grow and bring forth fruit, that we may meditate upon it, Lord, and just draw closer and more in love with you than ever before. For you alone are holy and worthy, and we give you praise for everything you've done for us and will do in your name.